Let's line that up. We might be using the periodic screen. be able to get most of what I'm doing on that one board. Back up there we go. Yeah. Now let's check our video and mic. Audio speakers turned all the way down. Mike, I bet Joycey did that. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. I, I did mention to the class uh, to think about when you want your final, didn't I? Yeah. About either in class or like regular or whether on their schedule. Yeah, and if we if we have it on on our schedule, we've got a choice of either Tuesday or Thursday. If we go by the dean's schedule, then we have to hold it on Thursday at eight o'clock. Almost an hour earlier. Yeah, hour and a half earlier. But if we go on our schedule, then we can come in. And I've checked, there's no room conflicts at that time. Yeah. <clears throat> so we can do it either day, Tuesday or Thursday. It depends on your other exams. You know, if you have something else you need to study for for Tuesday, then we can bump it to Thursday. Pretty sure my other exams just not changed. Okay. So, be turning so that's like a do at home situation. So my, 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 my schedule is pretty much free. I'm down for whatever. Okay. Whatever's easiest for everybody else. So in, in the schedule, I've got it down for Tuesday, okay. 7th. That works for me. Yeah. Is that okay with you, too? Yeah, Tuesday, 7th. Okay. So we'll do that, just get it out of the way. Yep. One semester, I'm free for a semester, I think. You got to double check your financial aid. She's killing time for the program starts back up. Oh. Um, and uh, re refresh my memory. What program is that? Radiology. Radiology. Okay. I was going for EPA originally. Yeah. But that whole thing's happened. Yeah. I applied to get into the uh, LP and the RN bridge that starts in May. And I turned in everything I needed to on the list by January. And in February, they sent me a letter saying that they didn't get like four of the things that I sent in and said that my file was incomplete and they could no longer look at me this year. So I got to redo it next January. Yeah. So I've got a year off. <laughs> well, that's because I've got all my prereqs already done and ready to yeah. start it. Have you talked to any other students to see if they've had the same trouble? No, I, well, there's a girl that I work with, and I told her about it, and she said she got in. So okay. I, I, I should have went and talked to her, but I was mad. <laughs> yeah, I got a year to go. Of course, my stuff just wasn't able to be turned in. Um, I had to have this class. Yeah, I'm not really that worried about it. I, I need to have some more nursing experience anyway. Oh, I just okay. got my license in September. Oh, so okay. I haven't been a nurse for a year yet anyway, so it might okay. suggest that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's see if you have any specific problems before I start talking. <laughs> <clears throat> this chapter is purely on oxidation reduction and electrochemistry. Uh, 
down the pages too. But we can do the last review names if we are honest. Yeah, we could do that. And then, yeah. that and then uh, as we proceed through, if something clicks and we say you need help on this problem, then we just divert to that problem. Okay. So, number one. Uh, consider the following reaction. We've got barium plus chlorine yields. That compound, uh, which of the following statements is true? Uh, I would like to see if it's balanced. Here's the big. It's balanced. First of all, is this a redox reaction? You got an element here and an element there. Both of them are in a compound. That's a dead giveaway. That's redox. No doubt about it. If you've got an element on one side and it shows up in a compound on the other side, even if it's the other way around, then you know it's a redox reaction. Uh, which of the following statements is true? Okay. Well, the barium atom is losing electrons. So we've got to define, decide which one's losing and which one's gaining. So remember the uh, oxidation state for pure elements is zero. And in this one, the chlorines are probably going to be minus one, and the barium comes from the second column. So it's two pluses, and that appears to be the case here. So uh, what happens to barium? It's down that way. Well, if it goes from zero to two plus, what had to happen? All right lost two electrons per barium. And since we only have one, then it's a total of two electrons lost. Uh, chlorine. So if barium lost, chlorine had to gain. So chlorine gained uh, one electron per chlorine. And there were two of them, so that's two electrons. And we got a balance there. Two electrons lost, two electrons gained. So now we can answer the question. Uh, a, the barium atom is losing electrons. Yes. Therefore, it is oxidized. So that's a definition. So you go back to your mnemonic. Oxidation is loss. So if that's loss, yes, it was oxidized. Um, and since E says none of these that's wrong, you can stop there. It's gotta be A. We could look at these others, but our time is probably better spent going on to another one. That's one. I can do this without erasing my title. There we go. We'll look at three. In the reaction, Strong tin plus fluorine. We get strontium fluoride. Strontium is in the second column, so it's going to be a two plus charge. Okay. Um, the question is what happens to fluorine? Fluorine, remember, these are zero. Fluorine is always one minus. It's never anything else. So that means it's gone from zero to minus one. It had to gain electrons. One electron per fluorine means two electrons gain. So if we look at the possible answers, um, Reduction is gain. So that had to be reduced, and it looks like A would be the proper answer for that one. Uh, let's see. Question. Tuesday. 
at this time mm -hmm. during exam week. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got three A's and Terry will just have to put up with it. <laughs> I think he's okay with it too. Okay, five. We're just doing odds until something occurs to somebody that they might want to look at something else. Uh, okay, so this one just says for that compound, what's the oxidation state of chlorine? Well, we can approach that two ways. We can say most often the oxidation state of chlorine is minus one, but it can vary. So it's probably wiser to look at lithium, which is an alkali metal, and all alkali metals are plus one. So that means if this is plus one, that has to be minus one, which confirms what we might have thought in the beginning. And that makes it uh, A again. That whole first page is A, isn't it? Coincidence. All right. Okay. Seven. Now we're looking at a polyatomic ion. And the question is, what's the oxidation state of sulfur? Remember, when we, when we determine the oxidation states of each of the elements in an ion like that, they all have to total up to that charge. So the best place to start is oxygen, which is always two minus, nearly always, except in what peroxides, then it's one minus. So if it's two minus for each oxygen, we have eight of them. They've got eight minus for all of the oxygens, but we need to reserve two of those minuses for this charge, right? So we really only have to balance six minuses. So that means this one sulfur carries the whole load of the balance, it has to be six plus. That's A again. We're on a roll. Okay, nine. What's the oxidation state of carbon in this compound? By the way, what is that compound? Let's say, let's say that compound is in aqueous solution. What would it be? First thing is, those hydrogens stuck out here in the front. It's gotta be an acid. So if we're starting with this polyatomic, which is what? It's called carbonate. And if our acid has an oxygen in it, we don't say hydro, we just say the eight becomes an ick. So it's carbonic acid. And if you drink a lot of pop like I do, you get a load of carbonic acid every day. That's responsible for the carbonation. <clears throat> okay, enough of that. Question was, what's the oxidation state of carbon? Well, oxygen is uh, nearly always plus one. And oxygen is uh, two minuses, so that's six minus. And this is two times plus one, which is plus two, okay? So that means in order to make, uh, to balance the carbon, we say uh, a two and a minus six is a, minus four, right? So that carbon has to balance with four pluses. And you check yourself, uh, two times this one is plus two, and then three times that one is minus six, and then a four plus. So if we say a plus two, four is plus six, and then three times two minus is minus six. So it would come out to zero, which is neutral for that compound. Oh, and that was uh, 
A again. <clears throat> oh, wait, that was nine. Yeah, it's still A. Um, well, this one's too easy. 11. What's the oxidation state of rubidium? Oh, in a compound. So it's paired with something else. I was about to say, if it's rubidium by itself, it's zero. Right? But in a compound, rubidium comes from the first column, so it's always plus one. Okay. Oh, there's a whole host of them in here. Let me see if I can find one that's might throw you a curve. Um, how about uh, 15? It just gets a little more complicated. What's the oxidation state of phosphorus in this compound? Okay. They all have to add up to zero. But don't forget this exponent down here has to be multiplied by this one here. So if this is 2 minus, then 8 times 2 minus is 16 minus, right? And uh, magnesium is in the second column, so it's 2 plus, which means 6 plus there. Okay? So these together are 10 minus, right? So 10 minus has to be balanced by the phosphorus. But how many phosphorus do we have? Two. So each one has to be five plus in order to balance. And that makes it uh, D. Okay. Let's see here. There's any one that just jumps out at me. Hey, Hello. we decided the exam's going to be on Tuesday. Okay. Exam week, same time, same station. Um. Let's try uh, 20, 22, I know it's not odd, but it'll help me make a point. Okay. Now, since the question is, what's the oxidation state of iron? We can simplify the process because we know that the carbonate polyatomic ion is two minus charge for the whole thing, right? And we've got two of them, so that's six minus for that whole group. Iron is, is gonna be a cation, and it's positive. So it has to balance six plus total. That means that each one has to be three plus. Right? So we can shorten the process by taking advantage of, the question is about iron, so we really only need to treat this as a, as a unit. I mean, you can go in and do individuals, do their oxidation states, but if you don't need it, you can save time by just polyatomic is that, this has to balance it, so there you go. And that makes 22 B, three plus. Okay. Let me see, let me see. You gotta stop me anytime you need.
How about, uh, okay, I'm jumping around now. Ooh, there's a typo. Well, this is in my key, so it may not be in yours. 31. Does your document 31 have a, a zero for the O, CRO4? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's, that should be a, a capital O, not a zero. Uh, but that's not the one I want to deal with. I want to look at 32. In this reaction, iodine, or iodide, and then the iodate ion, and then nitrogen oxide. Question is, what's the oxidation state of iodine in that polyatomic? So if we say oxygen is two minus, and three times two minus is six minus, we gotta hold out one of those for that charge, so that means we only have to balance the five minus. So that makes iodine five plus, even though it's a halogen, it's in the same column of fluorine. In this case, it's got a five plus charge. Right. It's not a minus one in, this, in that case. Uh, which makes it um, D is the answer for that one. Now, what has happened to iodine in this case? Well, the oxidation state for this ion is minus one. That's it. So it's gone from minus one to plus five lost or gained electrons. Had to lose electrons, right? To go positive. How many did it lose? Though? Six. Right. Had to lose six. I look at it this way. How far does it have to go to get to zero? One. How far does it have to go from zero to plus five? Five. Is that together? And then there's only one of them. This is, I also like to do this. That's how many electrons were lost per iodine. And then how many of them are there? One equals six electrons. That's, that's the way, the method I use to keep me from uh, making a math error in accounting for the electron. Okay. So that was 32. Let's see. All right, how about, let's take 33 and, uh, and 34. So let's start with 33, because they both use the same equation. Titanium, titanium four chloride, plus oxygen gas. So what type of reaction is this gonna be? A combustion. It's a combustion reaction because we're reacting it with elemental oxygen. And all combustion reactions are redox. Okay. So next, we end up with titanium oxide on that side. Where do you find titanium oxide? In several places, but I'm thinking of one. Paint. That's what makes white paint white. They use titanium oxide. Okay, so it looks like we're balanced. Yeah, that's good balance. Now, for 33, the question is which species is oxidized? Let's see. The easy one is that one starts at zero, and <laughs> this one becomes two minus for oxygen. This one becomes zero. And this one is minus one. And this one is four plus, right? To make it balance. Uh, oh, and this one is what? 
If this is four minus, this is four plus. Right? So in this case, titanium's untouched. I mean, it doesn't do anything. We could have left it out of this equation and just put the ions in there. But as it turns out, we went from minus one chlorine to zero, which means we lost an electron to go from minus one to zero. Lost one electron per chlorine times four chlorines. So four electrons were lost. And that's the species that was oxidized because oxidation is lost. Okay. Uh, now, 34. We're using that same reaction. Which species is the reducing agent? Trick question. Whatever is oxidized is the reducing agent. Let's see. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Right, chlorine is, is oxidized. But the reducing agent is the whole compound. Right. That's why your answer is uh, titanium four chloride. And for B, the element that is oxidized is chlorine. Okay. Just so that there's no confusion. <coughs> or less confusion. All right, let's see. Looks like we've got a lot of equations and a lot of questions that just hammer the same points over and over again. You get that feeling? Let's try 41. That's a little more complicated, simply because we've got to investigate each one of these reactions to find out which one is not an oxidation reduction reaction. So first one, A, methane plus oxygen yields water plus CO2. Okay, let's see if that's balanced. Four oxygens, two and four. Four hydrogen, one and carbon. That's balanced. Okay. Do we need to do oxidation states? If all we want to do is say, is this an oxidation reduction reaction? It's a combustion. It's redox. Okay. So that's one. Uh, so that doesn't answer the question because we're looking for the one that's not. Okay, how about B? Zinc plus hydrochloric acid is going to produce hydrogen gas and zinc 2 chloride. Okay, is this one an oxidation reduction reaction? The clue here is, is element compound. Element, compound, compound, element. That's an oxidation reduction. And uh, C, two sodium plus two water yields sodium hydroxide, hydrogen gas, and lots of heat. <laughs> I just stuck that on the end. That's a very energetic reaction. If you've ever dropped sodium in water, you'll know what I mean. It's not as energetic as potassium, 
but it's still pretty good. I mean, you want to, if you want to ruin your neighbor's uh, swimming pool, just get a big chunk of sodium or a big chunk of potassium and throw it in the pool. <laughs> it'll, potassium especially, it'll generate so much heat that once the, this mixes with air, the, there's enough heat to ignite it. So he'll have flames coming out of the top of his pool. But what will actually happen is it'll react so fast, it'll produce uh, an explosive uh, decompression, the gases that are produced, the hydrogen. Yeah, it could crack the bottom of his pool. Now, I didn't tell you to go do that. But here's an element, it's in a compound. That's a redox reaction. And D, MnO2 plus four HCl yields chlorine plus water plus MnO2. And here's another one, compound element. We've got a redox. And we didn't have to do any oxidation states on these. On these. We just use those simple rules and they're guaranteed to work. So E says uh, all are oxidation reduction reactions. Yep. They're all, there are none in here that are not oxidation reductions. like 42 there there might be one or two that are and a couple that aren't so we can look at those so the first one is phosphorus trichloride Is that oxidation reduction? Yep, there's an element in the compound. That's oxidation reduction. How about this one? Yeah. You know that one right away, don't you? <laughs> I'll be complete and just fill out the whole thing. Right. So there's an element and compound. There's an element and compound over here. So that's oxidation reduction. Let's see about this one. CO2 plus lithium hydroxide yields three H2. This one's not as easy. We're gonna to have to do oxidation states on this one. But I will say, um, this is the reaction. I don't know if they still use it, but um, when you go into space, you're generating CO2 as you respire. You know, they carry oxygen with them, but uh, humans being animals, we're gonna produce CO2 as we breathe. And you gotta get rid of it. So they filter the air through lithium hydroxide and it traps the CO2 in here. And that was one of the problems. You've seen the movie Apollo 13, right? Um, that was a problem because they were losing power and they had to, they had to use the uh, lunar lander as a lifeboat, but it wasn't designed to hold free people. And uh, sooner or later, uh, they noticed that the carbon dioxide level in the cabin was creeping up. 
so they had to deal with that. They, the, <laughs> the canisters that hold lithium hydroxide were square in one and round in the other one, so they couldn't they couldn't interchange them. So they had to rig up a a, a ductwork system to use the uh, I think it was the square ones that they had to fit. But this is the reaction, and the reason you can use sodium hydroxide to do the same thing or potassium hydroxide do the same thing. Why they use lithium hydroxide? Because lithium is lighter than these two. When you're going into space, you want the lightest load as possible. So they use lithium hydroxide instead. And of course, you know, price was no issue. Kennedy said, we're going to the moon. So NASA said, okay, here's what it's gonna cost. So okay, Congress is with me. You got the money. So billions of dollars. We made it to the moon. Uh, okay, so now we gotta see um, what's the oxidation state for each one of these. Here we can shorten our workload for that one. Well, let's not do that. Because we've got oxygen and hydrogen everywhere. Let's just do individual. Uh, Oxygen is two minus, so that's four minus total. That means this one has to be four plus. Okay. Um, so let's go over here and do this one. So this one's two minus, and lithium is in the uh, first column, so it's uh, one plus. So that means it's two plus total, and this is six minus total. So carbon has to balance what? Four minuses, so it's four plus. So carbon, that carbon, no change. Uh, lithium, lithium's always one plus, it's not gonna change. So what's hydrogen usually? Well, oxygen is two minus. Hydrogen's usually one plus, isn't it? Right? So one plus, two plus, two minus, that's balanced, just like that. So the only one we got left is water. So oxygen's two minus. That means this one has to be uh, one plus. None of them change. No, they're all the same. This is not a redox reaction. Uh, let's see. And we got four. Let's see, what was four? Iron two chloride. plus sodium hydroxide yields iron sodium hydroxide and sodium chloride. Okay. So we're gonna have to take chlorine as minus one. So it's two minus, that means this is uh, two plus. Um, this one is like that one, right? We just changed the sodium part. So that's one plus, this is two minus, that's one plus. This one, the hydroxyls are minus one. So two of them means this one has to be two plus. And uh, one plus here, two minus there, and here we have plus one and minus one. So there's no change there either. Right. This is not a redox. So only uh, one and two are redox, which is uh, C would be the answer for that. All right. Maybe what we need to do now is uh, balance some equations using the half reaction method. Uh, if we 
start with 55 is a really simple the reason I say that is um, there's no oxygen or hydrogen in there to deal with right, so we don't have to introduce that step and then we'll move to the more complicated one after this so what are the half reactions when this one is balanced First thing I notice about this is there have to be some um, spectator ions that are left out. Uh, and we definitely, there's an element ends up in as an ion, so that has to be in a compound. And this one, the charge went from plus two to three plus. So we know that we've got a redox reaction. Which one is which? Which one's the oxidation? And which one for reduction? Well, which one lost? Oxidation is lost. Iron 2 plus lost an electron to go from there to there. Okay. And if it loses an electron, which side is the electron in? It's supposed to be on. Got this side. Okay, because if we take one minus and three plus, we get two plus. Okay, so the reduction has to be this one going to this one. And that makes sense, because that oxidation state is zero. Uh, it's not balanced yet. Do they want us to balance? They probably want us to balance it. Okay. So this one's okay the way it is for the time being. Uh, this one, we need two of those. Then we need to go from zero to minus one, which means we have to add an electron for each chlorine, which means we need two of them. Okay. Uh, okay, so, which are the correct half reactions? Well, this is the reduction. So that's uh, row number one. And the oxidation should be, oh, before we can add them together, we have to balance the electrons, don't we? So that means two here, two here, two there. That's so these electrons are there. Now we can look for this one. So that would be uh, four, right? One and four. That's why I put them balanced in big red letters. <laughs> okay, that was a fairly easy one. Let's look for a harder one. Do we have any uh, short answers in here? Or they all want the choice. <clears throat> Looks like they're all want the choice. Okay, so let's find one where we have to. Let's do 56. The question is, for that reaction, once it's balanced in acidic solution, what's the coefficient of water? Well, you might scratch your head and look at that equation since there's no water there. We have to put it. We have to add water. Right? Because you've got oxygen on one side and no oxygen on the other side. And the only way you can get it is add water. So let's start with this one. Nitrate. And I think two plus. 
in ammonia. Okay, first off, oxidation states, well that one's zero. This one is uh, two minus for each of those oxygens, which means six minus, we have to hold out one, so five minus has to be balanced. So this one's five plus. That one's two plus because it's a monatomic ion. This one's uh, one plus for each hydrogen, so four pluses, but we have to hold the plus out for the charge. So that means we only have to balance three pluses. So we need three minus foot nitrogen. So zinc, from zinc to two plus ion is a loss of two electrons, right? So that's the oxidation step. We're going from this one. I'm gonna leave out the states. And it goes to this one as oxidation. Reduction has to be the other one. So we're going nitrate ion, and we're going to end up with ammonia. Okay? And let's see, this one's zero, that one's two plus. This nitrogen is five plus. This nitrogen is three minus. Okay, I think I wrote those a little too close, but we'll deal with it. All right, first things first. Anything that's not oxygen or hydrogen. That one's balanced. Uh, nitrogen, nitrogen, that's balanced for nitrogens. So then we can go to what's next? Oxygens, balance oxygens with water. Don't need it up here. We do need it down here. So we need a water to balance three oxygens, which means three waters. Okay. But that gave us six hydrogens. So now we have to put six hydrogens over here as protons. Okay. Now we can do electrons. If this is oxidized, that means we end up with. Two electrons over there to balance those two charges because we have to end up at zero. On this side, we need electrons over here because we're reducing it. So, how many electrons do we need? Well, we're going from five plus to three minus. So, it takes five to get to zero and three more to get three minus. So, that's eight electrons. And since there's only one nitrogen, eight electrons is it. Yeah. If we had a subscript on the nitrogen, then we'd have to multiply that. To be sure we had all the electrons accounted for. Now, before we can put them back together, we need the same number of electrons in each equation. Right? This one's eight, that one's two, so this one just needs a multiplier of four. So that means we've got four zinc, Yields four say two plus ion and eight electrons. So we're going to add this one together with that one. And since we designed it that way, we go ahead and cancel the electrons. So now we've got four zincs. Now, if you're in the middle of a test, um, you, you can answer it right now. Three waters. So the answer to 56 is three. But if we want the whole equation, we have to write this, that, that, this, and that. Okay. And that's acidic solution. What if this was a basic solution? What would I do to it? Neutralize all these guys, right? 
So if you put them on this side, you gotta put them on that side. Right. So what does this make? Acid-base reaction always makes water, right? So we've got six waters. But we've got three over there. So that means all of these are gone and leaves us three here. So a basic solution, it's that plus that plus these yields that plus that. That's not part of the problem, but I could resist. Let's see. We want to make a battery now? What kind of battery is used in an automobile? Lead. Lead. Oh, yeah. Lead storage. Topic 61. In a lead storage battery, this species is found where? In the cathode or the anode? Well, what does it become? That, right? And this is just like that. Right? In the other cell, we've got pure lead, and it makes the same thing. Right? So the oxidation state here, this is 2 minus for that polyatomic. So that means this has to be 2 plus. Right? So this one's going from 0 to 2 plus. And what's this one? 2 minus, 4 minus. 4 plus, so 4 plus to 2 plus is reduction. Right? We added two electrons. So, is this the cathode or the anode? By definition, the cathode is where what happens? Reduction. This is the cathode. Okay. That was number uh, 61. And the electrolyte, what's in the solution? Is sulfuric acid. Now this is not a balanced equation, because you know, end up with sulfate over here, where is it over here? You know. So that's not balanced. This was just to illustrate which one was which. This is the cathode, and this is the anode. Because this is where oxidation takes place. This is where reduction takes place. Now, when your alternator starts spinning, and you recharge your battery, then you run these reactions in reverse, right? Now, which one's which? This one then becomes the reduction, right? You're adding electrons to this one to make that. So in reverse, this one's the cathode, and that one's the anode. Okay? When you force them to go backwards. Let's see, where was I going with this before I interrupted myself? Looking for another equation. I was looking for one that was a real monster. Acid solution. How many electrons are transferred? 
Okay. We didn't do the Nernst equation in this class, did we? I don't think we did. But. When you use the Nernst equation, you're you're actually calculating what's the voltage of your battery. But to do that, you got to know how many electrons are transferred. Right, so if you go, if you decide in the future to go to general chemistry, or you need to to use that technique. Um, when you get your balanced equation, you need to remember how many electrons were transferred. Just a word of caution in the future. Uh, let's see. There's one basic solution. On 71, it's just yep. a, I just noticed it. I was okay. reading it. It says, you know, the question, but on the answers on D, it says four, and then it says not enough of information is given. Oh, that should be E. <laughs> yeah. I just, I was like, I was flipping and I was like, there's not a le another letter on the other page, so I guess it. Yeah, that's a hybrid answer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's another correction that needs to be made. <coughs> I was looking for one that was that's designed for basic. There's, there's one, 81. Asked you about that one in terms of basic solutions. Uh, 83 also, 82. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Just a whole series of them. Let's do Oh, there's some stoichiometry. We didn't touch on stoichiometry in the lecture, did we? I don't remember doing it. How about eighty seven? Okay, we're going to take this reaction. And we'll make this out of it. And that. Okay. Um, That one is oxalate. It's the oxalate polyatomic ion. With two, two H's out here, you have oxalic acid. You ever see those little, those tiny little flowers that have, uh, they sort of look like clovers, but they're yellow. And they, they have three of them usually. They go like this, and then you have another one like that. And they're, they're yellow. And if you take the, the plant and just chew on it, it's sour. It's sour because of that. It's got oxalic acid in it. In fact, this plant is called oxalis. It's a member of the wood sorrel family. It does a whole bunch of them. Um, a little bit of, of oxalic acid won't hurt you. Well, in fact, a lot for humans won't hurt you. But for uh, ungulates, those are the ruminants like cattle, goats, sheep, if they eat too much of that, um, they will fatally upset the microflora in their rumen. Because what it tends to do is it's, it, uh, it forms an insoluble compound with magnesium. And they go uh, hypo. Hypomagnesium, oh, magnesium, or something like that. And uh, then they die. <coughs> it just ties up all their magnesium. And I'm not sure what the treatment for it is. Maybe to give them intravenous or oral doses of magnesium. 
you know, or at the very least, have a salt block out for your cattle, you know, that has magnesium in it. Then if they do get hold of some of the stuff, then it, it won't be as damaging. They'll just get sick. Anyway, <clears throat> we want to split this equation up into uh, reduction and oxidation. And we want to balance it in basic solution. So we got to do the, the fake acid first, and then we change it to basic. So which one's reduced? Well, let's see. This is two minus for each one of those, eight minus, six minus to balance, because you have to have two of those out. So that means this one is six plus. This one is two minus, or eight minus, and we need to hold out two minus there. So this one is six plus for two carbons, which means three plus for each one. Let's see, this one is two minus, or four minus total, don't have to hold any out, so that's four plus. And this one is two minus, six minus, four minus, because we hold two out for that. That means this one is four plus. Okay, now we have our oxidation states. We can determine which one's oxidized and which one's reduced. Okay, uh, reduction. Which one gained electrons? Manganese. Gain two electrons. Six plus. And this one. Four plus. So that means this one is oxidized. C2, O4, minus, yields carbonate. Uh, and we start out here with three plus, and over here we end up with four plus. So we lost an electron there. But first, uh, manganese balanced, carbon. Now we need two of them. Right? Then we deal with oxygens. We got four oxygens here and two over there. Right? So we need another two oxygens over here. Right? Two oxygens, two oxygens makes four. This one, we've got um, four oxygens and six oxygens here. Right? Right? So we need two oxygens over here. And so now we have four, five, six, two times three is six. Uh, now we need to balance our hydrogens. So we have four hydrogens over there. We need four here. We have four hydrogens here. We need four here. Oops. Okay. Now we do electrons. If this is reduction, we have to add electrons on this side. So how many do we have? One manganese, one manganese, two electrons are added. Okay. On this side, we need electrons over here because it's oxidation. Making the frame for coefficient. So we went from three plus to four plus, which is uh, lost one electron. We need one electron over there for each carbon, but we have two carbons, right? So that's two electrons. That's it. Electrons are balanced. Right. So we can go ahead and add the equation. And the electrons cancel. And we end up with, oh, waters too. We've got one water here, uh, two waters there, two waters there. We can go ahead and cancel those too, right? They're an opposite size of the arrow. Hydrogens. Oh, we got four and four. The hydrogen cancel. So. 
if I did that right. It's unusual for that to happen. It looks like in the whole equation that you canceled the water, hydrogen, and yeah. electrons out. Yeah. So there's there's nothing to neutralize. In this case, it may very well be a basic solution, but the base is a spectator. It's not part of the reaction. So let's go ahead and add these together and see what we get. MnO4, two minus, and then our oxalate ion. That's everything over here. And on this side, we have MnO2, and then 2CO3, two minus. Now, what was the question? The question was, how many moles of MnO4 two minus are required to produce one mole of CO3? How many moles of this will produce one of these? So we're looking for this as our answer. And if we've got one mole of CO3 two minus, right? That's what we start with. Yeah, one mole of this, then we need to convert that to this one. Cancel this one. And so we got two of these for every one of those. It turns out that for every half mole of this one, we get one of those. That's why the answer is none of these. Because all we have is four, three, two, or one. Answer is not there. Okay. <clears throat> so I didn't get to uh, neutralize any acid on that one. Let's see, what else can we do? We could do 86, that one takes some work. 88, takes some work. Your call. Eighty-six. Okay. Let's see what kind of time we got. We're doing good. Some semesters are like that. And others, we just run out of time every time I turn around. Okay, if we start off with this one, yes, yep, and then this one, this one, plus this one. Okay, so we need oxidation states. Uh, this is two minus times four is eight minus. Uh, hold one out, so that means this one is seven plus. How do we do this one? All right, where do we start? Do we start with nitrogen or start with carbon? I would 
let's start with nitrogen, <clears throat> which makes it minus one, minus two, minus three. And remember, this is the book to keep you clean, right? So nitrogen doesn't necessarily have to be three minus, but we're keeping track of electrons, so that's a better place to start than carbon, because carbon tends to be more variable than nitrogen in its oxidation state. So three minus here means we only have to balance two minuses, so it's two plus. Uh, I wonder, we didn't do formal charging here, did we? Just oxidation states. Okay, forget that idea. I won't complicate the story. Okay, two minus, four minus, this is four plus. And here we start with two minus for oxygen and three minus for nitrogen, <clears throat> which means five minus total, hold one out. Four minus we have to balance, four plus for carbon. So oxidation, reduction, which one was oxidized? Looks like carbon was. So this is going to be CN minus at two plus for that carbon. And this is going to be CNO at four plus for that carbon. Reduction has to be this one. Seven plus for the manganese on that side and four plus for the manganese on this side. Okay. Now we balance everything that's not oxygen or hydrogen. Carbon nitrogen, carbon nitrogen, we're good there. Magnesium here, magnesium there, we're good there. Then we balance oxygens. Right? We've got one oxygen over there, we need an oxygen over here. We've got four oxygens here, we need four over here, which means two waters. That gives us two oxygens. Then we do hydrogens. Right? We added two hydrogens here, so we need two hydrogens there. And we added four hydrogens here, so we need four hydrogens here. Okay. Then we can deal with the electrons. So in this one, we lost two electrons. This is oxidation. Lost two electrons for each carbon. And there's only one carbon, so that's all we need there. Seven went to four. So how many did we gain? Three. We gain three electrons for each manganese, and we only have one manganese, so three electrons is it. Now we balance the electrons so we can add the equations back together. We got an odd and an even. That signals to me cross multiply. So we take three here and two here. So we're going to have uh, three CN minus plus three water equals three CNO. I thought that was an ion. And then three times this and six hydrogens. And three times two is six electrons. And then two times this one. Two times this one is eight. Two times this one is six. Just as we planned. Two times this one. And two times that one gives you four waters. Okay. So we can get the electrons are gone. Uh, let's see. We got six hydrogens over here and eight here. So we have two left over here. Those are gone. So hydrogens, electrons, waters. We have three waters here and four there. 
So those three are gone and leaves us with one there. Now, if we add them together, we get uh, two. And then a four minus three cyanide ions. Nothing more here. Two hydrogens here. We'll go to the other side. This one, and this one. And three C and minus. Uh, we got nothing up here left. We've got one water here. Okay, that's a six solution. Now we want to convert it to basic. So where do the hydroxyls go? Two of them right here. And two of them over here. Okay. So these become two waters. And then we've got a water on that side and two on this side. So that means we keep that one, and that one's gone. So we've got two MnO4 minus three Cn minus one water. We kept that one. Yields two MnO2, three CnO minus, and two hydroxyls. And 86 asks what? What is the sum of the coefficients? All right. So two plus three is five, plus one, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the sum should be 13. Yep, it agrees with this answer. So either it's right or we're both wrong. The key to doing these type of problems is be uh, anally methodical. So know what the procedures are and stick to them, step by step. Okay. I'm sort of out of ideas. There's <laughs> a lot of repetition in this. Oh yeah. Mm. Lots of repetition. For some people, well, for most people. Repetition is the best way to, to learn this oh, stuff. Yeah. Let's do it over and over. If you're not bored to tears, then you have work enough of it. <laughs> okay. No check. I Oh. You gonna go down the turnpike or? Or go across through loading. Okay, so that's our review. Uh, Tuesday we have an exam on this chapter. And then Thursday we'll do a final exam review. Again, Logan. I don't think I've ever been to Logan. Yeah. And it's got a couple of or three bridges. You know. <laughs> Uh, it's like any other city. Is there like how we have like Beaver, like Grandview, and places like that? They're like wow. there are movie theater and the YMCA is about it. <laughs> no, I think Gilbert. I mean, uh, it's got a shopping area on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, McDonald's. It's got Burger King. So yeah, it's got a mall. Yeah, that mini mall, sir. Yeah.
Because there's, well, it's about like Beck, the what's that small place there in Beckley? The Plaza? Yeah, it's about like Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I've never been. Oh, yeah, I never did. We see that Yeah, and they. Now I've been down like Wyoming and Oceana. There's nothing in some of those places. That's true. I mean, <laughs> The only place I stop in Oceana. You don't even have cell phone service. <laughs> yeah. You know, but the only thing that bothers me with cell phone service is if something happened. Supposedly, I heard that you can call 911 without having service. And I was like, how do you do that? Yeah. I don't know that. I, um, my, my service is practically just gone from here to Logan. Really? So oh, I went wow. to AT and T, and got an ATT phone just for emergencies because they have service all the way through. Uh, we have US Cellular, and I I haven't found really any problems with it unless I'm like we go fishing and like hiking and stuff. We're now we're deep in the woods or something.